Hello there, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to another episode of that wonderful, wonderful KSP. And in today's episode, we will be struggling with the damn physics of the game. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, well, I launched the left arm for the Kerbozord, and it was... Man, was it something else altogether. It was just, it was brutal. And we'll be going through many, many, many failed launches in this uh, this episode. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. But at the present, we're just moving away the Kerbozord from the station. I figured there were about 400 parts there. I don't know if you guys saw that or caught that when I pulled up the quick map view there. But yeah, there's about 400 parts with everything attached to Kerb and Space Dock. So yeah... It's still playable, but, you know, it's it's kind of crappy. So, we're just going to be moving it away, staying out of that rendering distance, which is, I believe, it's 2.3 kilometers away. And it's, it's better once we get out of that rendering distance. It's still a little laggy, but it's nowhere near as terrible as it is when I'm around this thing. So, we have refueled everything, or almost everything. I think I forgot a, a, uh, an RCS tank somewhere. I'm not really sure where. But yeah, we as you can see at the top right there, I pulled up the resources. We're short a little bit of RCS, but you know, whatever, it's fine. If we need it, we'll just bring over the refueling tanker, and that should be good. So yeah, just uh, pulling away here, and you know, this episode was, holy crap, so damn frustrating. And it's really because of the way the aerodynamics work in the game, and... Uh, well, I'll talk about it a bit more once I actually get into the launches. But suffice it to say, I wish there was a way to turn off some of the aerodynamics. Like some of the parts, I wish I could just tell it not to act like a wing or a canard. Just have it be a piece of, you know, a piece of the structure. But there is no way to do that. Not yet anyways. There might be mods for it. There probably are. But I don't use mods, so forget that. But anyhow, there we go. We got a nice little look at the Kerbozord. I think this is the best look we've had at it so far. So yeah, it's uh, just looking alright. But anyhow, here we go. First launch of the day. First of like 20. Man, this, this took two hours or so to eventually get this up there. Ugh. Yep, there's the first launch. I don't know what even happened there. I lost some engines on the launch pad they didn't even detach I or they didn't stay on I don't know what what was going on but uh, yeah so I attempted that again try to get things a bit more balanced and clearly that's <laughs> not going to happen but you know what I figured I wanted to see what's what would happen anyways so let's go launch that baby <laughs> I love that little wobble at the top there you can definitely tell it's totally going to work Yep, I'm surprised it actually didn't snap off at all. I mean, it really should have. Just look at it, it's bent at like 90 degrees to the rest of it. But it, no, it stayed attached. And then it exploded. And left absolutely nothing of itself. I always, uh, I, I like these crashes where there's just absolutely nothing left at the end. Total destruction. Yeah, right there, I don't know if you can see me hovering over the canards. Actually, I tried right-clicking on him to see if there was a way to tell him to stop flapping around, but no, there isn't, so. Here we go again. Figured out if I'd go a little uh, less thrust, it might be a little better, but nope, not even. I forgot about the SAS at this point. So, yep, we're flying sideways, and I didn't even want to see the rest of that, so here we go again. Yeah, most of this video will just be a series of launches and failures. Most of them ending with crashes, but hopefully you guys can can see the, the progression. You can kind of see what I was going for and thinking of while I was going through these launches. So by this point, I figured maybe use the RCS a bit to help it stay balanced. And it did actually work a little bit, but not as well as I would have hoped. It's once you reach a certain point off the launch pad, those that aerodynamics just sets in and it just messes everything up. And here I figured I could try to save it. Yeah, no, no, not so much. Let's just cancel out of there before anything else. And eventually I figured, you know what, maybe could it even be something else? Maybe something's not balanced? 
And so I just removed the canards that were in front of the uh, the laser cannon thingamabobber there. And it works perfectly now. So yes, it is definitely the canards at the front of the cannon that are just messing everything up. Ah, so frustrating. I did decide to try to see if I could get this up there. And I did actually make it up there, no problem. But, uh, I, I went back, you know, I can't leave it like that. It looks kind of lame without those wicked-looking canards in the front. I don't even know what those are supposed to be. Maybe that's where, like, the laser charges itself. I don't know, I'm sure you've seen, like, sci-fi and anime and what have you, where they're charging up the laser cannon in the center of the... the thing there, the, the center of the thing, yes. You know, it, it charges at the front of the cannon and then it blasts away. Anyhow, yep, this this was a successful launch, but unfortunately, it was not the ship that I wanted to get up there, or the module that I wanted to get up there. So we'll be going back to the launch pad again in just a second. Oh, I did. I actually forgot about this little part. I managed to. I think this is one of the few times where I've basically managed to set up an encounter right off the bat, right as I'm launching off the launch pad because that is where you launch things from. So yeah, that uh, that was very surprising. Right there, you can see it. I think it's about 14 kilometers, and once you make your orbit, it, I ended up cutting it down to about 5 kilometers, and then it's, you know, super easy from there. But, you know, this, this is not going to work. We're not going to make do with what we have here. No, 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 we got to go back, and we got to try again for another, like, two hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to do a lot more this episode than just do this, but no. I ended up getting so frustrated that I just kind of rage quit at one point and took a little break before I eventually went back and had some fresh ideas and actually got it working. As you can see here, I actually removed only two of the four canards, and it does fly a little bit better, but it still flies like garbage. So, here we go again. Let's add more wings. Hope I can balance out the lift of the canards. And again, kind of works, but not really. And all of these little things that I eventually put on, I'm just working my way up to something that does actually work. Look, more wings. Totally unnecessary wings. But hey, look at that. It flies straight. Right? Right. Wrong. Honestly, by the end, I I was getting to the point where I was just looking at the bottom left there, at the controls, watching the SAS try to pitch. And once it starts just pitching all the way down, there's, there's absolutely nothing I can do. So, here we go again. I don't even know what I did in this time. More struts, probably. More wings. I don't know. It was... this This was something else. And honestly, I think it was worth all of the effort because, as you can see here, I'm actually starting to think outside the box a little bit, just do something. That's the thing with KSP. Once you you try a few things, they don't work, just try something a little different, something that may seem a little strange, like in this case, adding engines on the middle compartment there, the middle stage engines that point outwards towards the direction that the ship itself pitches into or falls into I guess pitches downwards so basically I'm trying to balance out the lift by by moving the rocket to one side and it does actually work I thought this was super strange super weird I had no idea it would work but guess what it totally did so here we go, this was the second last design I believe, I had, I eventually started, or I eventually started, that makes no sense, oh, man I'm super tired today, I've been working my ass off lately again, and fun stuff, gotta love real life, but anyways, um, <clears throat> I started off with one engine, just one of the small little Rockamax in the center, then I went with two radial ones, and now I've got six radial ones, and this actually keeps it stable, surprisingly stable. There is one thing I'm worried about, and that is the fact that I don't have throttle control over those. I mean, they go at the same level of throttle as the rest of the spacecraft, so... Yeah, that's a, a bit of a scary thing right there, but... 
honestly, it it worked. I think I've been really honest this episode. I feel like I've said honest like 50 times already. Oh, and this is when things get a little wobbly, when my throttle control is messing me up. Yeah, I, I had it, I had the little radial engine set up on an action group so that they all fired at once and that I toggled them back and forth. But that wasn't good enough because it would only fire all six or none at all. So what I ended up doing eventually, and I believe this is the last design actually, I ended up putting, uh, having two action groups for those. So we have one action group which just controls two of them, the two center ones, and then we have the other action group which toggles the four outer radial engines. So I can get some extra thrust sideways if I need to. You know, I can toggle all six on, or I can use only two or four so I have a bit more variety a bit more options so should be much better right let's see how this one works out I mean it's tilting a little bit to the side which is okay ish I guess it does mess up the orbit a little bit but that's all right it, it's it's not terrible and okay that on the other hand is totally terrible yep I staged I don't know why I staged but I definitely staged and things blew up but anyway, here we go. Final, final launch, I think. Pretty sure anyways. So yeah, we now have decent control. And really, all it, all that, the, oh my god, I can't even talk. God damn, I feel like this is just, ugh. Sorry guys, I'm like falling asleep, I'm passing out. Anyways, um, <laughs> what was I saying? Something about control? Yeah, we have, uh, we have way more control than we did initially now that I'm able to switch between the, the two action groups and the only real issue at this point is once we get out of or yeah once we're out of the atmosphere so because I'm having problems because of the canards and that's because they're in the atmosphere man I I do apologize I feel like the commentary for this episode is just so disjointed I'm I was gonna do some more recording after this, but I don't think I will. I, yeah, it's it's gonna be some terrible stuff if I do more recordings. But I did want to get something out for you guys today because, well, I did struggle with this for a few hours, and it's been a few days since the last KSP, so definitely worth checking it out. But anyway, if I can <laughs> finally finish my train of thought of what was I saying before, the uh, the problem with the whole canard thing is in the atmosphere things get sort of messed up because you know aerodynamics and physics and whatnot but once you get out of the atmosphere it's it's fine you can stop using those weird little radial engines and it just goes back to being a normal rocket so once we get that all sorted out it's all good right here i'm just trying to toggle between the uh the engines trying to shut them all down and failing miserably because apparently i forgot which action group was what but anyhow we're up there, we're basically out of the thick part of the atmosphere. We don't have to worry about the canards anymore. As you can see, those radial engines are actually pushing the rocket to the side now. It's not keeping it straight anymore. Yeah, failing. So just turn off the engines and just turn them off manually. But yeah, as you saw there, it was actually pushing it to the side. It wasn't keeping it balanced anymore, so we don't need them anymore. And we have a little bit of time until we get to our apoapsis. That should be good. This is not how I usually do my launches, I'm sure you guys know. I do try to do uh, the gravity turn a little sooner than whatever, like 75 kilometers that I'm getting up to. But I did not want to risk it with those canards, because as soon as you start moving to the side, things will just go a little spinny. So yes, now we're up there, and we're good. Freaking finally. This took forever. Uh, but I am glad that I figured it out because, well, now I can use this design if I ever have... Oh, something blew up there, not sure what. But yeah, now I can use this sort of idea if I ever have other problems with things with aerodynamic parts. Because, honestly, those aerodynamic parts just, they look awesome. They look really cool to add onto things as, you know, like spikes or whatever, covers over other things. So yeah, I'll definitely be using more of those parts that probably should not be used. And then we'll uh, be doing more crazy, funky, 
second stages with random radial engines. Anyhow. Oh, there's actually something here that I found out. I had no idea. Apparently, uh, time still passes when you're in the VAB. I totally thought that it didn't. I figured it was, I don't know, it's in its own, like, dimension or something. But yeah, apparently time still passes when you're in the VAB, so instead of having a sweet little encounter set up, I had to do something else. Yes, something that didn't really work. Yeah, you can see there I have a nice encounter set up, but I don't actually have a periapsis on the other side. So, yes, we'd just be ending up uh, into the planet again. So what I had to uh, do eventually is to set up the proper orbit and then just burn a little bit a little bit stronger, a little bit more. And uh, push our orbit out a bit and then loop back around. And yeah, do it that way. I did not have the patience to stick around and wait. Because by this point, I've been playing for a couple hours, it's getting super frustrated. Ugh, just, just thinking about this whole launch process is annoying me. But hey, if you guys learned anything from this, then I'm very happy because, I don't know, if you guys ever have problems like this before, then do something different. Use those engines, use engines on the side to keep yourself balanced. I'm pretty sure NASA would never do something like that, but I'm also pretty sure NASA would never set up a giant Megazord in orbit. Though how cool would that be? I mean, come on. A NASA robot? Hells yeah. But anyhow, there you can see the uh, eventual encounter. We have the whole rendezvous set up and all that good stuff. But we will be doing that in the next episode because, like I said before, I, I just... I don't feel like recording anymore. I'm just exhausted right now. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm sure you have been able to by how disjointed my commentary has been. But anyhow, as we get nice and close, I'll be closing up the episode here. Next time, we'll be doing the actual docking part itself. I have not ever docked with uh, two docking ports before. So having to attach two docking ports at once. And I did try a little bit of that after I stopped recording here. And it, it it was bad. It was not fun in the least. So I'm going to have to... I'll definitely be doing that off camera and then doing post commentary again because it was just brutal. But definitely next episode we will be doing that and hopefully actually attaching this left arm. And I also do have a little something else to show you guys. You remember that jetpack prototype I was working on? Yeah, I have something a little different now. It's a little bit bigger a little bit less like a jetpack and more like a, a rocket but you know it's sort of a jetpack figure with uh, GTA 5 coming out in a couple days made me think about classic GTA vehicles like the jetpack from San Andreas I guess that's not really a vehicle but yeah I just wanted to get something like that built which I will also show you in the next episode so thanks again for watching guys I hope you enjoyed let me know what you thought and all that fun stuff down below and I'll catch you next time. Take care.